Hello. Today's theme is human. And I want to talk a little bit about, at the beginning here, about what humans are made of. As a species, we've been on the planet for about 300,000 years. This is important because the majority of that time we've spent outdoors, surrounded by daylight, fresh air, and natural materials. In fact, it's only in the last 200 years that as a species we've begun to move to urban centers and become indoor creatures. What's amazing is today the typical North American spends 90% of our time indoors. What's also important about is that if you look around this room and realize we're surrounded by synthetic materials. Our bodies are adapted for natural materials, natural conditions, but we surround ourselves with synthetic materials and it's starting to affect us. So I wanted to introduce the concept of body burden first. And this is the idea that these synthetic materials that we put into our buildings, when, when they come into the space, they're not fully cured or they're still reacting. And so emissions come out of those materials or they're not well bonded and small portions come out and get into our space. And they get into our body through three different ways. The first is through dermal contact, through our skin. Uh, the second is through ingestion. So if you think about little toddlers crawling on the floor and all the things they put in their mouths. But the most important pathway is through our lungs because all those little uh, parts of materials and the gases get into our lungs and it get absorbed into our body. And because our body's not adapted for these new synthetic materials, they get stuck in our body and our body has a difficult time processing. And that's the idea of the body burden. If you look at this slide, think about it for a second. What could this possibly be an ingredient list for? Maybe an industrial cleaner, or a snack food that'll stay fresh for generations? <laughs> if we look at the ingredient list of a human being, it starts with water, it goes to protein, it goes to fat. What we're finding out is at the bottom of that list it are all of these synthetic materials. This is my colleague Robin Gunther. And a few years ago, she had her body burden tested. And to her shock, her amazement, she came, the test showed all of these different substances in her body, all of them associated with toxic effects, all of them associated with negative health effects. I want to focus on six of them and show you how the, the things that we surround ourselves with, those synthetic materials in our buildings, are coming to affect us. So if you look around the space that you're in right now, if you look at the carpet on the floor, the paint on the walls, maybe the fabric of the seat that you're sitting on right now, most of those things are made from synthetic materials. You can imagine the insulation in the walls. All of these things are having effects on us. And the reason is, is because of all of these things that we're adding to them that are not well bonded. They're coming out through gases or portions that are coming into the space. Flame retardants, triclosan, an antimicrobial, VOCs, volatile organic chemicals. The research is showing that these sub synthetic substances are associated with some very serious health effects because they're not bonded well and they're getting into our systems. And what happens with these chemicals is when they're in their body, because they're often chemically close to the hormones or the other chemicals that are naturally in our body, our body thinks those are substituting for those hormones. So they're becoming endocrine disruptors. They're developmental toxins. If you think about all the development we go through our lives, it's affecting the normal process of our development. Most worrying, it's actually affecting our ability to have children. It's a reproductive toxin. So the most difficult piece of news I want to give you today is that even if you were to clean up your lifestyle, if you were to eat really well, if you were to take care of yourself, the research is showing that we are all born into this world with a body burden. When our mothers are pregnant, the toxins that our mothers are exposed to are passing through the mother to the child. And the point I want to make is that no matter what we do individually with our lifestyles, we are all in this predicament together, and it's only by working together that we're going to find a solution. So there is very good news. Our body, this wonderful technology that's been around 300,000 years, is very good at doing what we want it to do. PCBs, a toxin that was agreed universally was, should be banned from use, was banned in 1979. And you can see from the graph after the ban, the, the amount of PCBs in breast milk in the study of Swedish mothers was reduced. If we give our bodies a chance, it will do great work. A similar, more recent study out of California, this is for flame retardants in mothers in California in the breast milk. In 2006, this flame retardant was banned for use in California. And you can see the result. 
again, given a chance, our bodies will help us remove the toxins from our body. So you might think, well, we can rely on regulation. This is, we can advocate for regulation. We can ban these chemicals and pesticides and things that we're coming across. I want to point out asbestos at the top line. The risks around asbestos were first identified in the 1970s. It took 19 years for asbestos to be banned for use in buildings. In fact, it's not until 2018 that we will have a comprehensive ban in Canada. So my point is we can't wait for regulation. We can advocate, but we can't wait for it if we want to be sure about our health. I show you this slide to make a point about information. I lost a bet to a colleague at work, and I had to eat this spicy chicken donut sandwich. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you wanted to find out if it was healthy, what could you do? That's really easy. You can go online. Quick service restaurants are required to provide the calorie counts for their products. Consumer demand got them to publish the ingredients. So you can make a choice if you want to eat it once, once a week, once a day. That's your choice to make. We can't do the same thing with building materials. For me, that's not okay. We need access to the information to make the best choices about the materials that we expose ourselves to. So I want to tell you a story about a, a girl in 2012 in, in Mississippi. 16-year-old girl, her name was Sarah Cavanaugh. She liked to drink Gatorade. She looked at the back of the Gatorade label. At the bottom, she noticed something called brominated vegetable oil. And she wondered, what is that? So she went online and she realized that bromine is also used in the flame retardants. And she started asking more questions. Why is this in Gatorade? And what she ended up doing is she put a petition online to ask Gatorade and Powerade to remove this from their, re from their recipes. She got 70,000 signatures, and the result was these two very large companies changed their recipes. So this is what we can do if we all put our voices together. I'm an architect. I work every day to design and specify materials and make healthy buildings. But today, we need your help, and that's what I'm coming to ask you for. We need you to ask this simple question. What is it made of? When you go to buy paint, ask the question, what is it made of? When they're putting new carpet in your office, ask this question, what is it made of? When they're putting new floors in your child's school, ask this question, what is it made of? In August 2014, Perth, Australia, passengers were boarding the train on their way to work. The fellow in the gray shirt and the gray hat was boarding. Somehow, he got his leg wedged between the edge of the platform and the train. He was in an impossible position. If they moved the train so he could move his leg out, he would be hurt. Passengers started gathering. Remember, this is rush hour. People are piling onto the platform. Even though he was in the difficult situation, everyone is affected by his, his predicament. And this is the same thing with materials. Even if you or someone you don't know don't suffer from asthma, we are all affected by the body burden that's in our bodies. And there's a great lesson here. The passengers joined together and somehow they did the impossible. They pushed together and they tilted the train enough that he could pull his train out from between the platform and the train. He, he walked away relatively unharmed. The passengers got on their way to work. But it, this is the idea that working together, we can make the impossible happen. And this is the big thing. We need your help. We work all the time to produce buildings that are healthy, but we need you to amplify our voices and ask this question. When I first started in 2006 looking into this issue and realizing how we are surrounded and using toxic materials to make buildings, I didn't think it was possible to build anything, let alone build anything that's beautiful, inspiring. There was nothing that we could point to to tell you there's a beautiful, inspiring alternative that you can choose. I want to show you a few projects today that show you that there's a future waiting for us that's healthy. This is the visitor center at the Van Dusen uh, Botanical Gardens here in Vancouver. It's quite a, a beautiful building, beautiful forms inspired by a flower. And we worked hard to remove toxic materials out of this building and won awards and certifications. So you can go there and you can look and marvel at the sort of the beauty of the building, but also breathe deeply knowing that it's a healthy space to be in. This is the Center for Interactive Research on Sustainability at the University of British Columbia. This is a pioneering building for sustainable design in Canada, another one that we worked on to remove toxic materials. 
People love being in this building. It's full of fresh air, it's full of daylight, it's full of natural materials, and it's free of all of those materials that are causing us concern. We are working on research now with leading academics to prove that buildings can make us healthy. Because we've heard stories from the occupants that these, working in these buildings are having a great effect on their life. We talked to one woman, when she, before she moved into this building, her lung capacity was at 47%. She could only work three days a week because she had to go to get therapy the other two days a week. Within six months of moving into this building, her lung capacity was at 92%. She works a full-time job, and she is happier than she's ever been. We think this is the future, that we can create healthy buildings. But we need your help. We need you to amplify our voice and ask this question. We need you to be those passengers pushing the train. We need you to be those 70,000 people demanding the change in the recipe. Because there is a healthy future out there if we just ask. Thank you.